What's up guys, DS3 TV here. We are here for another video. This one is Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee is fighting games and this was by Polygon. Um, I don't really know if we're going to be able to do more Polygon videos. Uh, if you do like this, this one because they do have like a million some subscribers and I know from experience, like from, and to name names, Geography Now, um, they like to, um, copyright strike their videos if you even just react to them which should not be the case but yeah that's the case in this it that can be the case so um we'll see how this video you know is and if they claim it that's fine but if they um are just like if they claim it then that's fine but if they try to strike it then just no more but i'll have to keep you updated on it you know like as a like you know as i put it out uh, today so yeah but yeah let's get into the video uh bruce lee is fighting games i have all i have always liked bruce lee um like you know like like what like watching bruce lee as a um like a, in his movies and stuff like that and i always have liked uh like bruce lee things so that's always been a fun that's always been um something fun for me to like, whenever I see like one of his movies, it's always wanted me to watch and stuff like that. And, you know, it kind of gave me a little bit of influence to want to be a director. So, yeah, it's kind of very interesting for me. But, um, yeah, let's get into the video and play. Represented in video games more than any other human being. And I don't just mean his face or that signature wingspan. I mean his essence. Bruce's popularity, identity, and philosophy have fundamentally informed the last 30 years of game development, especially fighting games. And it all started when Bruce Lee unknowingly, posthumously, inspired the creation of Street Fighter. I didn't know he actually inspired Street Fighter, that's crazy. Just like Bruce wasn't the first martial arts star, Street Fighter wasn't the first game where two people move back and forth on a screen and hit each other. But it was the first series that refined and presented those ideas in a way that would launch a thousand imitators. And we have Bruce to thank for it. Mm. Let's jump back to 1972. Video games look like this. Bruce Lee looks like this. He spent his life traveling between California and Hong Kong, working as a martial arts instructor and an actor. He's had a lot of roles and a successful run of films in Hong Kong, but he hasn't. Also, I must say, also he was a director for all of his movies too. That um, that he played, that he like a uh, starred in, like every movie that he starred in, he was a um, director of of that movie. Broken through to international audiences. He's writing and directing a new picture, and he starts shooting some scenes. The project is called Game of Death, which will be important later when we start talking about video games. Please just give me a minute, I'm getting there. Before Bruce can finish his film, he gets a call from Warner Brothers, offering him a chance to star in his first international picture. Enter, enter the dragon. I'm going to describe the plot of this film, and I want you, a gamer, to let me know if any part of it sounds familiar. An eccentric underworld mastermind invites fighters of varying nationalities and styles to his secret island compound, where they battle one another in deadly unsanctioned matchups until only the most powerful warrior remains. China's film industry had been producing kung fu and wuxia films for decades, but international audiences had never seen hand-to-hand -hand combat like this on screen. It was faster and more violent than the watered down portrayals of Eastern martial arts from spy movies and whitewashed TV shows. Bruce's leading man swagger is infectious. In America, the film makes 25 million on its $850,000 budget. Ooh. Overnight, Bruce becomes a worldwide star. He's also dead. Bruce Lee had passed away suddenly. Yeah, because he had a um, brain aneurysm. And mysteriously, about a month before the debut of Enter the Dragon. The explosive popularity of Enter the Dragon and Bruce Lee lifted martial arts to a new level of mainstream acceptance. Acceptance he didn't live to see. Pop songs, cartoons, comics, magazines, and eventually, games. Hmm. On a fundamental level, it helped create the market for stories about martial artists of varying styles and nationalities clashing in dangerous locales. 
but their real connection to Street Fighter is even more direct. In order to inspire Japanese game developers, Bruce had to get to Japan. Here's Bruce Lee biographer Matthew Polly explaining how he got there. But basically Enter the Dragon was the first to be released in Japan, became a huge hit, and so they went back to look for all his other movies because they wanted to make money off of it. Um, and he was so famous they even released Fist of Fury, which is very anti-Japanese. They didn't seem to mind it, and it didn't affect his uh, heroic status in Japan. So if anything, Bruce Lee's bigger in Japan than he is in the West. One of those movies was the hacked together cut of Game of Death, the film that Bruce never got to finish. The basic plot was that there was something important on the top of a five-story pagoda, so Bruce had to battle his way up floor by floor, engaging in one-on-one -on -one fight. If you look at Mar if you look at Mortal Kombat, I actually a lot of this seems familiar from Mortal Kombat. If you look at it, like even they have a mold for the towers, and also Dead or Alive. If you played that series too, and if you still do play that series, yeah, Dead or Alive fights with increasingly difficult opponents. There's a fight structure that's narrative and has a trajectory where there are levels to each section of this fight sequence. As far as... Also, I just thought of another one. Um, they actually had an episode of that in Spongebob when Sandy was going through, like, they were trying to... It, it was basically like that with Spongebob uh, when Sandy tried to... Like, I think Sandy was trying to save Spongebob or something like that. But yeah, I remember that too. That, like, she kept going through, like, all, like you know, like, like different levels of the, of the tower. And um, it was like different, like different progression of enemies or whatever. Yeah, I remember that. As I can tell, that had not been done before. That's Curtis Choi, producer of the Bruce Lee Criterion Collection. More from him in a bit. A few years after Game of Death, designer Takashi Nishiyama began working on Kung Fu Master, which was pretty much Game of Death, the game. Just like in the film, the hero fights their way up a five-story pagoda. But unlike the movie, it also featured dangerous butterflies and child warriors. But most importantly, each staircase was guarded by a powerful opponent with their own martial arts. I actually think I played this game before, um, because I think I played it on, um, on the computer. I just can't think of it, um, because, yeah, it was like, I'm trying to think what was, like, what was it called? Because it was on, like, a... It was on a disk, a disk drive. I think it was uh, ma'am, yeah, ma'am, disk drive or whatever. That that was good. I think Stein. I played on there. During these encounters, Kung Fu Master feels like a fighting game, but fighting games don't exist yet. Late in development, the game would be reskinned as a tie-in for the very weird and very underrated Jackie Chan Sammo Hung vehicle, Spartan X. But it was still, at its core, a Bruce Lee game. Ooh. A few years later, when Nishiyama was at Capcom, he had the chance to expand on his favorite part of Kung Fu Master. I was thinking about the boss fights in that game, and I thought it could be interesting to build a game around those. I think you could say Spartan X was the basis for the whole idea for Street Fighter. It dropped the tower structure of Kung Fu Master, but it still had the linear progression of martial artists representing unique styles and nationalities. They also threw in a competitive multiplayer mode so you could test your skills against a real human opponent. Nishiyama would eventually move on to SNK, but his team at Capcom would create Street Fighter 2. Street Fighter 2 would do for fighting games what Enter the Dragon did for martial arts. It created a demand for fighting games, spawned dozens of imitators, and transformed a niche interest into a mainstream phenomenon. But Bruce wasn't just the butterfly flapping its wings that caused the fighting game hurricane. His identity was immediately absorbed into the genre. As soon as Capcom got the opportunity to add new characters, Bruce was back in the picture in the form of Fei Long, a fighter who, for all intents and purposes, was Bruce Lee. And this was far from the first Bruce Lee knockoff. In fact, Bruce Lee knockoffs were a film genre of their own. They called it Bruce Bloitation. So basically, Bruce Bloitation, to put it simply, is Bruce was the biggest star in Hong Kong. That makes sense. It was Bruce Exploitation. Yeah, that makes sense. Bruce was the first one to break it open to an international audience. And at the time, many people in the West didn't know Bruce Lee was really dead. 
So they hired imitators to pretend to be Bruce Lee to try to trick audiences in the 70s to go to the movies. You take Bruce Lee and combine it with the exploitation, you get Bruce Bloitation. And that's exactly what these were. I mean, these movies were very crassly designed, by and large crassly designed, to capitalize on his popularity. Bruce Bloitation gave us actors with nearly the same but legally distinct names like Bruce Lai, Lee Bruce, and Brute Lee. It was the human equivalent of those movies like Transmorphers and Atlantic Rim. Bruce's appearance in games can be seen as an extension of Bruce Bloitation, but better. Bruce Lee was one of a kind. None of his lookalikes could ever compare. But fighting games can come really close. And why should game designers have to invest? That is true though. That is actually very true. Because they can copy his, like in a game you could copy more so his moves than what you could in real life because nobody could be the exact same as Bruce Lee. Like it's definitely Bruce Lee had his own style of fighting and that's why he was teaching that style of fighting. So yeah, in a game you can, you can basically, those guys limit with, with, how, with whatever you can do invent the perfect fighting game character when he already exists. Bruce Lee designed himself. He made very intentional choices about his body, costumes, the way he talked and moved. So if you're going to build Bruce for a fighting game, you just need to lift the work he already did. The stance and proportions of a fighting game character should be instantly recognizable even in silhouette. Is their stance heavy and powerful? Do they have big leggies for doing big kicks? A fighter's stance is like their signature. Ryu's been bouncing on his toes for so long now that Capcom can dress him up in pretty much any outfit they want, and he's still immediately identifiable as Ryu. Bruce's stance is low, mobile, and entirely his own. Rather than lifting it directly from any hand-to-hand -hand martial art, he picked it up while watching his older brother fencing. On screen, it evoked that same sort of classy, measured precision. It communicated that he wasn't just some brawler, that his strikes would be precise and deadly. His build was equally intimidating. From a very early age, he had a very wide torso and really skinny legs. And so he knew what his best qualities were because he could make his lats really big and he had spent a lot of time working on defining his torso. He's one of the first action stars to ever realize that creating this kind of uh, sculpted musculature would convey power to an audience. As soon as he takes off his shirt, you think, oh, he's, he's deadly. Even in the hilariously distorted body dysmorphic realm of fighting games, the most dry, shredded up guy is gonna be the Bruce Lee guy. Like superheroes or cartoon characters or candy wrappers, a good combination of colors can create such a strong association that you can subtract everything else and still get the picture. Bruce Lee landed on his most iconic costuming choice on a winter retreat he borrowed a ski suit, popped it on, and was rightfully feeling himself. He adapted that look for a game of death. Uh, and his idea- Oh, wow, I didn't know that came from a ski suit. That's actually pretty cool. The idea was this jumpsuit represented modernity, the jet set. And so in Game of Death, all the other characters are wearing traditional Kung Fu style clothes, and he's the modern man who has risen above traditional styles to create his own. Films and games alike have paid tribute to this look. It even shows up in Animal Crossing. Yellow and black became the unofficial colors of Team Bruce. A fighting game character's vocalizations give them personality, telegraph their moves, and feel good. What's up, guys? Uh, you know, DS3 TV back is back again. Um, <laughs> what just happened was, um, yeah. So the video, you know, stopped, and I had to um, delete some stuff. So yeah, we're back into the video, and yeah, let's get into it. Let's get back into this video, and uh, yeah. Falcon punch. It's sad, and once again, it's something that Bruce Lee thought of. His solution was unique. So I spent like several years asking various people the, the cat screeching sound that everybody mocks with Bruce Lee. 
uh, no one knows where that came from. Um, he once told someone that that's what he did in fights, but he didn't actually ever do that in a real fight. Um, I think somewhere along the line, he started doing it and he realized it was really effective. Nobody else does this. It was another case of Bruce Lee designing himself as a memorable character. When he was on screen, he needed a sound of his own, a vocal fingerprint. And of course, every one of his video game knockoffs does this. There are even characters like Liu Kang, who doesn't look much like Bruce and doesn't do too many of his moves, but is still considered a Bruce Lee tribute, because he sounds like this. Obviously, moves are really important to fighting games. They are the game. It's the mechanical core of the experience, but it's also another space for expressing who the character is. In Street Fighter, your character might have a couple dozen moves. In Tekken, it's roughly 4,500. Bruce was closer to the Street Fighter end of the spectrum, and his classically trained stunt team gave him some shit for it. They used to call him Three Kick Lee, or Three Leg Lee, um, and that was considered an insult because he didn't know Peking Opera, and he didn't know these forms with 50 different moves. He only knew like six or seven really good moves. But Bruce's limited kicking repertoire ended up being an asset. It canonized his moveset. You don't buy a t-shirt of Ryu's crouching medium punch. You get the Hadouken. Tekken's Bruce clone, Martial Law, exemplifies how well Bruce's iconic moves adapt to fighting games, and nobody knows that better than competitive players Rip and regular size Majin. You know, some of the stuff that stands out to me about the character is like the legend kick, right? So it's like the, I think he did it against Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. The legend kick, or flying side kick, shows up in just about every one of Bruce's films as a dramatic finisher. It's pretty much become his superhero pose. And it wasn't his only gravity-defying stunt. So Law has the flip kick. It's one of the first moves that I saw in the early Tekkens that drew me to the character. Ever since I seen that move, I just, back in the day when I was playing Tekken 3 with my sister and everything, I will always spam that move because I know nothing about that move. It comes from his fight against Ohara in Enter the Dragon. The bad guy tries to grab his leg and bonk. Even though it's one of Law's most spammable moves, Bruce Lee only did it once. But when you do a backflip and kick a man in the face at the same time, once is all you need. And this is just barely scratching the surface. If you want a super duper, incredibly detailed compilation of the moves Tekken borrowed for Law, check out these videos by Pepper Beef Too Spicy. Each of these elements is so iconic, you only need one to make a Bruce Lee clone. But fighting games don't just borrow the aesthetics, they're also influenced by Bruce's philosophy. Bruce Lee taught us to care about fighting. You've probably heard the Be Water speech. I said, empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. That idea of constant evolution and adaptation was the core of Bruce's own martial art, Jeet Kune Do. JKD brought a streak of radical 60s individuality to martial arts. The idea was to reject the limitations and tightly enforced borders of individual martial arts and adopt skills that work for you and your body and will work against your specific opponent. Bruce Lee was not the first person to think intellectually about fighting. Boxing was already called the sweet science, but he used his films as a platform to show off his philosophies. His intellectual musings filled our heads with all this esoteric combat knowledge. Okay. What's up now? We're back for hopefully the end of the video and let's get back into it. And uh, yeah, I had to delete some more stuff, so let's get back into it for this one cuts off. Fighting games are a purified, stripped down, cleaned up version of a professional fight. This sort of exaggerated, clearly readable combat can also be seen in Bruce Lee's fight choreography. Because of that, the concepts he used in his fight scenes can tell us a lot about how fighting games work. Spacing is a super important part of on-screen combat. In Bruce's films, the kicks and punches are cool, but the tension that's released with each strike is powered by anticipation. As Bruce and his opponent jockey for position, they both want to stay just outside of each other's attack ranges. But different opponents have different ranges. 
Chuck is different from Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who's different from Jihan Jay. By moving into his opponent's attack range and then immediately out, Bruce can get them to commit to an attack that will completely whiff, like this, allowing him to jump in and punish. In fighting games, this principle is referred to as footsies, and it's the bread and butter of high-level play. Oh, okay. oh, call out again! Another technique that Bruce uses a lot is counter-punching, using a faster attack to interrupt an opponent's slower attack. In this moment here, Bruce's character knows that he can get his quick jab out faster than Chuck's powerful kick. So even though Chuck starts first, Bruce is able to cut him off and score big combo damage. In fighting games, if your opponent commits to hitting you and you beat them literally to the punch, you can do more damage, stun them for longer, or even launch them into a full combo. These are counter hits, and in a fighting game match, you are constantly fishing for them. Adaptation and flexibility were at the core of Bruce Lee's fighting philosophy, and he works to incorporate this theme into his on-screen battles as well. I'm telling you, it's difficult to have a rehearsed routine to fit in with. Broken rhythm. In his fight against Jihan Jay, Bruce throws out a right and gets chucked. Then it happens again, and again. After the third time, he knows exactly what to expect, so he makes a read. He blocks the throw, strikes Jihan in the ribs from up close, and then does this to his nuts. Come on, dude. The point of the sequence is to show that Bruce is able to quickly identify his opponent's habits and adapt. In fighting games, this can go by a lot of names. Mind games, Yomi, Reads, The Download. The Download is actually a term of, uh, as a... If you were to go against your opponent and you've never like played against this person before and you start like adapting against like the shit they do and everything, if you start recognizing the stuff they do, you're like, oh, okay, I can do something against that. I can I definitely sidestep against this, block against that, and I can punish. Let's say I'm playing with my buddy Blake. I notice that whenever I get into a certain range, they will fish for a hit with this low kick that's pretty fast and hurts really bad. Realizing that is step one of the download. Step two is deliberately putting myself in that range, anticipating the kick, blocking low, then punishing during the move's slow recovery. Wow, I'm exactly like Bruce Lee. <laughs> and so is my opponent. This is the exciting part of fighting games. Both players have the ability to learn and adapt, not just the hero. Whoever can Bruce Lee faster wins. Is your global champion. With his incredibly eloquent Be Water speech, Bruce was able to popularize a Taoist principle to a massive new audience. For a player like Majin, it inspires him to adapt through tough sets. Half the time, like when I'm at a, the edge, the sharp edge of like losing in a fight, I'm like, all right, calm down. You can do this. Just try and flow, flow against your opponent. And then like eventually if that uh, ends up happening, I can uh, be able to take over the victory and everything. I'm like, ah, oh, okay, that's what, I, that's what I was supposed to do. For some players, the connection to Bruce Lee is conscious, but Bruce is so yeah, I mean, like some something like even before I heard the Beat Walker speech, even like something like I heard my dad tell me before, like before I even heard it was, you need to, you need to basically, you know, basically it was it basically kind of was a Beat Walker speech, basically like just you need to, if you're going against someone, even like on a game or real life, you have to not don't don't get too mad. Because if you get too mad, you're not going to be able to think. And then when you're not able to think, you're not able to like counter what, what somebody else is going to do. So you can never really get too mad uh, during a fight. And that's what you should. You should never get too mad because that's when you actually know you're going to lose. Wholly ingrained into the DNA of fighting games that lots of players interact with his legacy without even considering themselves Bruce Lee fans. Rip, who made it to the finals of EVO with a Bruce Lee character, hasn't watched many Bruce Lee films. Yeah, so the thing that's really crazy is a lot of the uh, Tekken Law players, you know, they, they know me, they, they've talked to me, they're like, wow, you must be this crazy Bruce Lee fan. And I'm like, yeah. This is the power of Bruce Lee. He's so appealing and interesting as a character that he can draw you in even if you don't know about him or his movies. 
Bruce's legacy and philosophy fit so snugly into fighting games that it's both painfully obvious and invisible. When you put Bruce Lee into a cup, he is the cup. When you put him into a teapot, he is the teapot. When you put him in fighting games, Bruce Lee is fighting games. Well, that was a good video, and uh, yeah, so I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Um, subscribe to the channel, I want to get down subscribers by Valentine's Day, which is this upcoming Sunday, and yeah, so I'll talk to you guys in the next video, and peace.